It is sadly interesting to note that sexual harassment, though more notorious in tertiary institutions, is quite rampant in primary and secondary schools. Avidly in every year as part of the university management over the last uh, 12 years, at different times I would say that no less than 12 cases are reported. Hello viewers and welcome to this week's edition of Corruption Must Go. I am your host, Muruna Barnabas Atiai. Recently, ICPC in partnership with Gender Mobile Initiative, with support from Ford Foundation, organized a discussion with stakeholders on how to prevent sexual harassment in tertiary institutions. The crux of the discuss was on how to proactively provide a safe learning environment, especially for females in tertiary institutions, with the active participation of students and staff on respective behavior and reporting channels. Stay with us as we bring you details. Welcome to this segment on anti-corruption stories. I am Ruth Awadi. In a significant move aimed at promoting the culture of integrity and accountability in Ocean State, ICPC entered into an alliance with the Ocean State government through a Memorandum of Understanding, MOU, signed by both parties. The MOU was signed by the chairman of ICPC, Dr. Musa Adamu Aliyu, SAN, and the governor of Oshun State, His Excellency Senator Ademola Nuruddin Adeleke, at the government house in Oshobo, and was witnessed by top state functionaries and top officials of ICPC. The chairman of ICPC, who was warmly received by the governor, commended the Oshun State government for showing commitment towards the anti corruption campaign through the collaboration with the commission. This collaboration embodies our collective resolve to combat corruption and foster culture of integrity and accountability within uh, in Ocean State. Today's sign of the Memorandum of Understanding of Ocean State Government is a historic step forward, the of the recommendation of the Bankara, the provision of our Constitution, and the ICPC Act. We will commit to the most partnership focus on anti-corruption initiatives, public education, and activities designed to enhance integrity and accountability within Russia State. In his welcome address, Governor Ademola Adeleke reaffirmed his administration's dedication to good governance and financial discipline. Governor Adeleke mentioned the area of partnering with ICPC, which included monitoring and evaluation of projects, which to him would enhance existing quality assurance and also expand anti corruption efforts within the state. It is my pleasure to warmly welcome the chairman of the ICPC to the government house. This is the state of the Uri Swift, where the government is our country. We welcome the ICPC into our dear state where our government has zero tolerance for corruption. Our government is therefore elected to partner with the ICPC to further deeply good government especially in terms of anti-corruption protocols. The anti-corruption agencies have dedicated assignment with the mark support and cooperation of those holding top government officials. Our government is today demonstrating this political will by entering into partnership with the ICPC on project monitoring and evaluation. The MOU between the Commission and Ocean State Government establishes a collaborative framework for promoting anti corruption initiatives public education, and strengthening accountability within the state to further promote ethical practices. That will be all on this segment. Corruption Must Go continues. Stay with us. Corruption not in my country. Yes. Good 
day, sir. Good day. Sir, I'm here in line with my score in the last final exams. What about your score? You gave me 25%, sir. Oh, oh. You scored 25%. So you didn't add my continuous assessment. If you did, I was... told you that. If you're in rain semester, you fail. It means you have one extra year to go. Oh, sir, please, I beg you in the name of God. I can't afford to have an extra year. Why are you my... begging it? Please, sir. My mother is depending on my graduation so I can cater for my younger ones. Please, you sir. Fail. Let's just meet somewhere. Uh -huh. Continuous assessment. I'll give it to you. I'll give you continuous assessment. Huh? Everything. <laughs> Just Stop! This is corruption, not in my country! Stop corruption now! Corruption not in my country! You're watching Corruption Must Go, reaching you from the network service of the NTA. The objective of the event was to engage stakeholders from civil society organizations, government agencies, public and private educational institutions, to implement the model anti-sexual harassment policy drafted for schools. Welcoming guests to the occasion, ICPC Chairman Dr. Musa Adamu Aliwu, SAN, revealed that a few years ago, the Commission had worked with the Gender Mobile Initiative and others to come up with a model policy for various levels of educational institutions to adopt to tame the ugly trend of sexual harassment in schools. He went on to call for a persistent, consistent, focused, and united campaign in order to decisively address the challenge at hand. Take a listen. A few years ago, the ICPC, in line with its commitment to address all forms of corruption, including abuse of office, peer sexual harassment, with the support of the Paul Foundation, executed a project aimed at carving societal this was terminalized. One of the expected outcomes of that project was drafting of model of anti-sexual harassment policies for various levels of educational institutions. It is sadly interesting to note that sexual harassment, though more notorious in tertiary institutions, is quite rampant in primary and secondary schools. Two, with the support of Paul Foundation, the Commission had a series of engagements with stakeholders in the basic education and tertiary education sectors to sanitize them, and the office went further to draft a modern sexual harassment policy for these institutions. The success of this initiative largely depends on active participation and commitment of the stakeholders like you. Consequently, I am delighted to see the caliber of stakeholders in this hall today and I am optimistic that today's event will be very engaging and productive. This conference has been held to ensure that the model policy for tertiary institutions does not end off like many others that need to be adequately implemented. With your active participation and engagement, we can make a significant difference in the fight against sexual harassment in our tertiary institutions. Welcome back. You're still watching Corruption Must Go. The Honorable Minister of Education, Professor Tahil Mamman, in his remarks, commended ICPC for widening their scope of work to cover other areas that affect individuals in the society, such as sexual demands made on vulnerable persons. He called for continued advocacy and concerted efforts of all stakeholders to stop the cancer of sexual harassment bedeviling our tertiary institutions. But you know, the way the ICPC has been defining its responsibilities is fantastic to widen the scope of the work, go into areas that are so terribly important for the common good of the society, and then uh, work on it. Because a lot of it in the universe is actually, uh, you know, what some of our girls go through from some lecturers in terms of the demands they make financially and then sexually. And so these things really put high in glove. 
and the soil is right and appropriate for the commission to delve into this and provide leadership for it. And so we in the ministry, we are wholly committed to supporting you in this regard and working with your organization, with the Minister of Justice, to ensure that uh, we eradicate this in our campuses. I am a Nigerian, a highly cultured race. My culture abhors corruption. And with my integrity, a new Nigeria is possible. I say no to corruption today to build a future for my children. Join me and imbibe the culture of integrity to build a Nigeria of our dreams. This is Corruption Must Go. Remarks were received from some key stakeholders present at the discourse, such as the Minister of Women Affairs, Barrister Uju Kennedy Ohanenge, representative of the Ford Foundation, Chairman House Committee on Civil Society, amongst others. Federal Minister of Women Affairs have noticed that the majority of reasons we've been talking and talking and doing all sorts of things and it is not working is because there are no consequences, no justice. People do things and they feel, what can anybody do to me? Highest, you will settle police, or you will settle the lawyers, or anything. When you have consequences, people will start respecting themselves. That mindset, you think you engage, and you speak to them. You can't succeed except there are consequences. First, I go back to this question of assessments. I think we need to make sure that the system of assessment limits as much as possible individual contact uh, of students with lecturers. And I think in many places, the system has been set up in such a way that students deal with the academic office and assessment matters. I hope that we can find a way to set this up so that students will deal with the system rather than an individual. It is no gain saying that sexual harassment in tertiary institutions in Nigeria is a very significant issue that affects students, staffs, parents, and in fact the entire society at large. The ripple effects of these offenses trickles down as, a, as, as the impacts often lead to emotional distress, loss of confidence and self-esteem, academic challenges, drop out of schools, contracting uh, of uh, sexual, sexually transmitted diseases, and so many other negative impacts that this harassment can give rise to. I would want to speak particularly on a bill being sponsored by them. We had some roundtable discussions on it, and that has been pushed to the House of Reps and at the same time to the Senate. Our thinking is that the bill should go at the same time rather than waiting for concurrence. Concurrence means when one house passed, the other one. Deputy Vice Chancellor from the University of Lagos, Professor Ayodele Asenua, while giving situational analysis of sexual harassment in tertiary education institutions in Nigeria said, any unwanted behavior, physical, verbal, or innuendo, which makes a person uncomfortable, mostly gender-based, and is all about sex, is usual sexual harassment. I think one other problem that set the tone for what it is that we're having today was that students in universities, when universities started off, were first, were definitely more mature. And there was a presumption that they could take care of themselves. And nobody was talking about power dynamics. But there was a presumption that with these are mature students who can say yes and who can say no. The size of the problem, it is huge. And even ECOWAS acknowledges that it's such a massive size that in December 2021, the ECOWAS Authority adopted an ECOWAS policy on prevention and response to sexual harassment in the workplace and educational institutions for the region with a 10-year strategy 2022 to 2032. We all are aware of the BBC uh, sex for kids 
the uh, documentary, that is the nature of the problem. Avidly in every year as part of the university management over the last uh, 12 years, at different times I will say that no less than 12 cases are reported. Now we do not know unreported cases, but these are cases that are formally reported and that is why we are here. How do we get more cases reported and how do we get more justice? But increasingly, more cases are being reported because of the kinds of activities that are taking place here. The forms of harassment that we see in the university institution are of two types. And usually we must not conflate. It is not every form of harassment that is it one thing for the other, you know. Uh, sex like sex for grades, what we call quick poo You know, it's not always you give me this, I give you that. Sometimes it is hostile environment. It is just making the whole environment hostile that is bad enough. And that is very insidious and unfortunately it is when lecturers or whoever, even students, you know, so I always say we had a case of architecture studio and architecture male students had made the studio hostile for female students. So it is not, whatever we talk about, it is not always as simple as you ask for sex so that you can get higher grades. It sometimes it's the setting. She also raised some issues that need to be cleared, such as dealing with sexualization of interactions from primary level, mandatory order for institutions to have reporting platforms that protect victims, amongst others. A major highlight of the day was a robust panel discussion on institutionalizing sexual harassment prevention frameworks, which was anchored by the executive lead of Gender Mobile, Omawumi Ogunrotimi. The panelists were drawn from the legislature, ICPC, NUC, NBTA, Student Union, and Civil Society Organization. Like you rightly mentioned, in the Eighth Assembly, you had um, Senator um, Omar Gege, right, bring up that bill, right, uh, and unfortunately it did not get a lot of traction. In the Ninth Assembly it was a little better, and uh, what you had was a situation where in both the House and the Senate it was actually passed, and uh, the only challenge was that they didn't have uh, you know, presidential assent. This is something that has come up again in the Tenth Assembly, so I'm proud to have sponsor that bill as well and it's currently going through the legislative process wow. and um, I'm, I'm aware that um, there are also efforts for it also to be brought up in the senate i don't know the status of that particularly but it's also so that uh, it works by pursuit so that when they come together uh, you know passed in both chambers it's easier to be able to uh, work towards presidential assets generally icpc is established to prohibit corrupt practices and abuse of office. And we found within the provisions of the ICPC Act, specifically Section 8, 9, 10, Section 18, Section 19, and Section 24, it has provisions where gratification is defined to include benefit of any kind. Benefit of any kind. And again, as Professor Senua very big conceptualized for us, you find that most instances of sexual harassment is transactional. It is, you give me something in exchange for something. So we find that the currency of exchange there is not necessarily pecuniary. Sex, like she said, is the currency of exchange. And so we're able to uh, bring that within the framework of the ICPC Act. And we are happy with the successes we've uh, been able to record. Respect of that. We went into strategic I mean, uh, prosecution of cases. We found cases that actually, clearly, were able to fall within the framework of the provisions of the law. Concerning specific issues on sexual harassment, when I mention social biases, I say sexual harassment is one of them. If we ask for a complaint redress this, it is not only in private investing, both federal and state investors who ask for some complaint redress this. And then you see it's working on putting up a portal, a platform, an online portal, platform where cases of such can be reported. The directorate of 
students where I am directly involved, who work, is working in, along with the legal unit of NUC. Such reported cases have to be followed up. These are modalities being put in place by the NUC. There is a, almost a taboo, especially in our institutions of higher education, about talking about the experience of sexual harassment. So when we hear the language of culture, or that it is endemic or um, widespread, uh, we have to put into place mechanisms for uh, mental health counseling, or support networks. Um, if people, are, if students are required to report, who are they reporting to? NAN's uh, president is here. What is the campus social culture of accountability? among students themselves. Um, are there infographics on school campuses with numbers to call, with people to reach directly? So there's no greater police, social police, than students themselves in a campus environment. If you look at the public service rule, the public service rule provides punitive measure for an offender, which include, okay, let me say, the public service will provide them for misconduct and serious misconduct. Sexual harassment is seen as a serious misconduct in the public service room. And the easiest way, the punishment is dismissal. If we can apply this, how many people have we dismissed? These are questions that an offender would find difficult to answer before coming forward to report. For us to be able to be transparent, I would like to create a committee to make sure that perpetrators are brought to face the law. In this committee, we can have um, personnel from the ICPC, from Gender Mobile, and Legal Aid that can actually speak and to check the school management in question, because you talked about the school management now. To check the school management and to be able to like focus on issues based on gender around gender issues and sexual harassment. Students need to know where to go. And we have, in all universities in Nigeria, for those that are serious, we have centers for gender studies. What are their roles and what are they doing? And I think sometimes there are, how should we say, I don't want to use the word handicapped, but when Prof spoke earlier, she mentioned administrative processes. Sometimes they don't even know what the administrative processes are. Sometimes students don't know where to go. Sometimes the referral point is not clear enough and there's so much focus on indecent dressing when the reality is we are talking about a power dynamic. We are talking about transactional relationship in which the female body is the price. And I think until we recognize that, that that's where it is, then we will always have problems. That's all time will permit us to take on this week's edition of our program. Don't forget to follow us on our social media platforms showing on your screen. You can also watch other editions of the program on YouTube at ICPC Nigeria. See you again next week for another engaging episode of Corruption Must Go. Bye for now. I am Murna Barnabas Atiai.